Greetings, everybody out on YouTube. It's your buddy Chopadong again, coming at you with another episode of Chop Talk, brought to you by the one, the only, DFSArmy.com. You one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy sports related. DFSArmy.com. Head down to the comments section, click the link, use coupon code CHOP to become a VIP today, knock 10% off your price, and join the website that's dedicated to helping you become a better player. All sports, NFL, NBA, NHL, PGA, college football, all of it. We have the tools, we have the content, we have the coaching to make you a better player. So it's obviously start by drop by and take a peek at what we have to offer because you can't get the explanation to use the tools if you aren't a VIP and you don't get the coaching channels to tell you what to do. Real-time messaging, of course. You've heard me talk about it on and on and on and on and on. Let's dive in today because we've got a lot to cover. Tuesday is a big week, a big day of the week for DFS. So as usual, find me out on Twitter at Chapadong. Give me a follow, give me a like, and a subscribe in this video, and let's promote the social media content that keeps this stuff pouring out to you, because I got to tell you, it's working. We're growing, we're building a following, and we're starting to really jam this stuff up. I don't know if it's the fact that I just don't care, and I'll say anything at any time to anybody. I mean, I don't, or if it's just so bad and so painful to watch that it's like a train wreck and you can't look away. Either way, thanks for the follow, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Let's dive into NFL today. NFL, the first thing we do is we start with the odds. Vegas Insider is one of the places that I go. If I wanted to cruise down this list and look for things that kind of pop out at me and then just kind of use my head what we know at this point in the season at what we might want to target, what games we might want to target, this is where our research starts. And I got to tell you, this first game, Monday, uh, Thursday night, is it's another Thursday fade situation. Hey, you know, speaking of which, did the Thursday through Monday fade it off the Thursday game? Did just fine last week. One, You know, went like five and... You know, one in uh, head-to-heads, had a small slate, didn't like the slate last week, didn't like the 1 p.m. slate at all, the main slate at all. Uh, it wasn't 5-1, and one. it was, I want to say I took about 11 head-to-heads, so it was 10-1, and one, and ended up, I think, hitting a triple up. Uh, I don't think I'm in cash at GPP, I don't think I hit the quintuple up, so it wasn't like some bombastic great week, but it wasn't bad. You know, for the game plan, what we were trying to do worked out just fine. Uh, NBA was great last night. And NHL was great last night. We were on the right people with the Colorado one line with Ajo, Furland, and Helly Buck and Goal, man. He came back, beat my Blues. Well, my Blues beat themselves. But if you follow all the sports, it's a fun way to play. You play light across all those sports. I, look, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to make millions of dollars. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to be a pro at this. I'm not the kind of guy. I, I can coach you fundamentally and teach you how to become a better player. Absolutely. But I'm not the guy that's going to you know, teach you how to pay your bills. I'll teach you how to manage your money. But I rely on our coaches too. I mean, I coach the beginning players. I coach a lot of the fundamentals. I'm busy editing content on the site all of the time, getting that stuff out, getting that stuff ready for you. But at the same time, I do like to play. I just, the more and more I dig into the website and get into more of the backside of things, the behind the scenes stuff, the less and less I get a chance to come out front and study the game and play the game the way it meant to be played. So I end up relying a lot on our coaches. Well, one thing that I do know is I've got my own basic systems, my first glance, first look type stuff, and it relies on taking a peek at the slate through Vegas. Uh, let's look at the Miami game is terrible. I don't want any part of it. I mean, when I if I had just a one game slate or just a two game slate, yeah, I'd dig into it and I'd look at it. But I don't have that. I don't I don't personally play that way. I'm not a big showdown guy, not a big prime time guy. I'm looking at the big slate, and that game is not needed especially considering it's going to be a little bit overplayed. Another London game, Philadelphia-Jacksonville, not great. You know, another 40-point total or so with a two-and-a-half-point spread. Don't want really to – don't care about it. I, I don't need to look into it that deeply. You guys might. That's fine. Go for it. Cleveland-Pittsburgh. I'm going to be wanting me some Pittsburgh. I can automatically tell. They're at home. That puts Ben in play. That puts the bigs in play. Cleveland, not terrible. Garbage time, Jarvis Landry. Uh, don't know that I trust Baker Mayfield. Didn't really trust him to begin with. He's very up and down as a rookie. I know he probably had a good week. I didn't need him in my lineups to cash, so it didn't really freaking matter. Uh, put him on the road in Pittsburgh. I don't know, man. I'm not interested in that. You know, maybe Chubb again, being that uh, the Pittsburgh defense isn't super tough, but and, and Chubb will probably still be cheap. It'll take a few weeks for his price to get up to where it should be for a feature back in any offense. 
let alone if he performs well and really takes the reins of this role. Uh, 50 point total tells me I should be there. Tells me I should be looking possibly at both sides of it, but more so the Pittsburgh side because of the heavy spread. If it was a two and a half, three point spread, I'd be looking at both sides of it, but this one I'm leaning Pittsburgh. So of course it's Antonio Brown, Juju, Connor, you know, Big Ben, those types of guys. Uh, Denver, Kansas City, of course, Kansas City. We always target Kansas City. Now, Denver's going into Kansas City, which is even better because Arrowhead's got back-to-back -back weeks. Now, party atmosphere there is going to be absolutely unbelievable. Ten-point spread, Kareem Hunt. Go look at what he's done lately. We looked at it last uh, yesterday in the fantasy scoring of the week. He's getting into the top leaders. He's what one of the running backs scored over 140 points. If not, he's really, really close to it based on yesterday's research. Uh, Denver, 55 and a half point total. Denver, you get some garbage time stuff there too, but I'd be leaning on the Kansas City side. We know Case Keenum, man, if he could get the ball to people, I don't know. Emmanuel Sanders would be immediately in play. I don't know what I would do with that running back committee. Uh, I wouldn't even mind taking shots on that Kansas City defense right now. Kansas City defense has been bending but not breaking, and of course teams have to pin their ears back and shoot out with them, and that means a whole lot of throwing in case Keenum ain't that good. So, Kansas City's been picking the ball off a little bit lately. Might have scored defensive touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks. Again, check the box scores for that. But that's definitely, definitely, definitely a game to target. New York and Chicago. New York's a decent defense. Uh, Chicago is not a good offense. I know Trubisky's been fine, but who's he going to throw to? If, K if Taylor Gabriel isn't there, it's not going to be Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson is like a poor man's Golden Tate or a poor man's uh, Jarvis Landry. He's like Mohamed Sanu right now, and it's terrible the dude is so much better than that i watch him i keep my eyes on him because he can be great but i don't think he's in an offense that really should supports him or really has the talent surrounding him to do a lot with it i don't know why Tariq cohen is a thing if we find out pass catching backs do well against the jets Tariq cohen is a thing uh, he also gets you some wide receiver type targets out there off to the side uh, i don't like anything as far as a tight end in this game probably won't touch either one of the quarterbacks probably won't touch the running backs other than Tariq cohen maybe Jermaine Curse, good bounce back spot. Man, did he screw a lot of people. He screwed me too last week. Uh, we need to get some news on if that guy's going to be in the slaughter. God, if he even took the field last week. I don't know what the goose egg meant. I, big spread, low-ish total, Chicago defense, maybe. You know, maybe a little bit sneaky. Uh, Washington, New York Giants, pick them, 42, blech. I would look in this game maybe for some obvious things like a Sterling Shepard, Sa Saquon Barkley. Um, I don't see it being an Adrian Peterson week necessarily. These are the things that I'm like. It's not an Alex Smith week. That dude has reverted back to 2017 Alex Smith or 2016 Alex Smith. He's just all of a sudden dink and dunk, no A dot. He doesn't have anyone behind him pushing the ball down the field. So he could do it if he just, you know, he's like me playing poker. He sits down and camps for the nuts and just laughs at you when you, you know, when he makes a big bet and you call him, because it's like, did you not know I was taking the safest route option possible? Is that, is that not what you thought I'd do? Have you not been studying the game film? Have you not been sitting here paying attention to the way I play cards? I'm not taking risks. He doesn't bluff. He doesn't take big chances. Therefore, boring. Slow, methodical. Winner, boring. Uh, Tom Kite in golf, if you guys are old 80s golf fans. God, David Sims, if you watch the movie Tin Cup. Seattle, Detroit, another 49-point uh, game gets my attention a little bit. Still going to be focused more up here. Gets my attention a little bit. That would be, what, carry on Johnson. I mean, Seattle has been getting gashed, have they not? Didn't Todd Gurley just trounce him? It was Denver that was getting gashed. But I know Seattle didn't put up a good fight against Todd Gurley either. So maybe maybe there is a little carry on Johnson week in here. But, again, we'd have to see how the matches play out because that's a committee, and I don't like committees. Tampa Bay, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, bounce back spot. Bounce back spot. Tampa Bay, awful secondary. Andy Dalton, home. Favored, implied to score over 24 points. I can already tell you he's going to hit the box checking article right away. Uh, A.J. Green is a little up and down by nature, but in this matchup, probably decent. Tyler Boyd, probably back in play. Uzoma, probably in play. And then on the comeback with Tampa Bay, James Winston might get himself in a little bit of a shootout if he wants to have any chance at winning this game. That puts uh, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Mike Evans, I don't think it touches any of the running backs. Brayton Howard tied in by committees worse than running back by committee. Baltimore, Carolina. Carolina at home, not favored. Baltimore favored. That's a tough one. It's going to be a little bit of a slugfest. Don't know what I would do with the running backs. Don't know what I would do with the quarterbacks. Flacco on the road. John Brown. Eh. 
Probably not. Not a strong enough matchup. Carolina at home. Cam Newton always in play for tournaments. Probably not in play for cash. Don't think I like that that much. It's only about a 23-point implied total for Carolina. Indianapolis, Oakland. There's a big one. Oakland, devoid of talent. Let's just trade them all away. But you can't... You can't if you gave me a 10-year contract and my name's John Gruden and I want to clean house, I might as well clean it. And if I've got a sucker on the other end of the phone like Jerry Jones, he's willing to give me a first-round pick for Amari Cooper. <laughs> Thank you, you dumbass. <laughs> Enjoy your big screen TV hanging in God's stadium. You're a moron. Oh, my God, that's funny. But... Dallas definitely needs a needs a wide receiver of some kind. Let's just hope that oh, let's just hope Amari Cooper can catch a cold. Oh, it's awful over there. But all those first round things, they have three first round picks in Oakland this year coming up. That's how you stockpile. That's how you become the St. Louis Rams. You get good overnight practically. And oh, Oakland is moving. They're moving cities soon. That's what you do. You take your old fan base, you stick it up the butt, and you tell them, see ya, thanks for all the support and all the love, but we're out of here. We're going to go set up camp in a new town, and we're going to get good for them. Screw loyalty. That ain't the NFL these days. Why do we watch this league? Why do we pay attention to this damn league? Oh, yeah, gambling. Back on track, DFS, gambling. San Francisco, Arizona, not going to play that game. Green Bay, L.A. Rams, Gurley, 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 Gurley. I would imagine golf and the other guys. I'd want to look at the secondary in Green Bay, but I would imagine the second that golf's probably still in play. Might get Cooper Cup back. Of course, if not, you get Woods, you get Cooks. You're set up pretty darn well. Green Bay and Aaron coming, A A A Ron coming back at. Whew, that could be a shootout. 10 points is a lot, but that game could be a little bit closer than that because the L.A. Rams defense, they get a pass rush on you, and we know that uh, Aaron's not mobile, but you got to wonder about those quarterbacks out there in L.A. Might be a Devontae Adams week. Might be one of those Todd Gurley, Devontae Adams, get out of that game in cash, go somewhere else. Box checking all over the place, L.A. Rams will be. Might be my second or third favorite game, just looking at the surface of it, but it's going to be a little bit one-sided. Probably won't take a lot of the Green Bay side. Then we get down into the Sunday night game. 52 points, one point total. Got flexed off into a good matchup. That's fun for the Thursday-Monday slate. This is where your games are going to be the Thursday-Monday. You'll play a little bit up front. This is a much better main slate this week. You're going to play a lot up front. you probably skip Oakland or the London game. Then you'll play the up front games. You'll play these back-end games. You probably won't play. Well, Man, oh man, 15 point, 14 points on the road, 44 and a half point total. That's 22 minus 7, 17. 22 minus 7, 15. 15 point implied total. Fire up New England defense. I mean, we already know stack against, or you know, put the defense against Buffalo Bills. But that's how you're basically going to do it. So you're going to be booking in this slate, playing way up front, playing down here on the back, focused on LA, focused on. Uh, possibly either one, New Orleans or Minnesota. That is if Adam Thielen's not girly priced at 10K. He should be because he's right up next to him in points, fantasy points. Uh, focused on the New England side of that ball. Back down here, focused on Kansas City. Maybe come back with Denver. Focused on Pittsburgh. Those are four or five teams you're probably worried about the most. If we look into the first week article, or the first look article that Notorious puts out, we go to the implied team totals. If it would call up here, we can look at the DVO, DVOA matchups. Actually, we can hit the refresh and see if we can pop it up. Come on, honey. There they are. These are your implied team totals. Chiefs, Rams, Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals, Minnesota Vikings. These are things we didn't, we already knew. How are the Colts going to score 26 points? That's Andrew Luck being on the road, probably more of a GPP quarterback. Maybe a little TY. Be nice to TY. But these are the offenses you should be focused on. Down here. Where did Buffalo go? Bills at New England, 21 points. It's not what I saw. What I saw was 44 divided by 2 is 22. Minus 7, 22, minus, or minus 3 and a half. My bad. No, minus 7. Half the spread. 22 minus 7 is 15. This one here is bad math. Buffalo should be all the way down here. Because 21 in New England... 
21 and 22 only adds up to 43. Well, all right. My math says 22 minus 7. So 22 plus 7 is 29. 29 and 15 is still 44. So that's what I'm looking at. Look down here, DVOA type stuff. You guys can go do this another time. Let's jump in and let's play all value game. Let's look at these quarterbacks and let's start down here towards the bottom and let's start working our way up. Least objectionable quarterback. Bortles, no. Manning, no. Keenum, maybe. Alex Smith, no. Keenum, interesting. Hadn't been good for a while. Mayfield, probably not. Beathard, Wentz. Wentz always has a floor. Facing Jacksonville, bad matchup. Russell Wilson facing Detroit. Possible decent game, no weapons. Uh, Joe Flacco, Carolina, not interested. Deshaun Watson, where'd he go? Not interested. Mitch Trubisky. Give me Trubisky. I know the Jets are a decent defense. Uh, actually, 100 more for Dalton. Give me Dalton. Let's go down to the wide receivers. Do The running backs do the same thing. Just looking at the, the, the softer guys. Where's that Chubb at? Come here, Chubby. 6400 Priced up. Priced up. Don't know if there's going to be anything underneath him, though. Crowell, Howard, Doug Martin, Aaron Jones, Royce Freeman, Jalen Rich. Nope, 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 nope. If you want to take on this committee, it's just really not much. We'll dig into the numbers a little bit, but at first look, Lindsey, Drake, Mac, that's a big game. Big game out there in Oakland. Might be more of a Heinz game, might be a Mac game. If Dalvin Cook is out, although New Orleans is a little better against the run, their secondary is trash. Adrian Peterson, carry on Johnson. Start watching this number right here. After I do something like this where I plug in these, and I'm going to recommend you come up here, right? $11,000. Holy cow. How about that? How about them apples? You know, you want to upgrade later, we do that. But we come down here, cheapest defense viable. Where's the Patriots? Patriots are here, 46. Might be looking for another situation. Lower team total. Houston, Philly, Chicago. Houston, Philly, Chicago. Look at this. I'm coming all the way down. Houston, Philly, Cleveland's never terrible. They they give up a lot. I don't want to take Pittsburgh on at home. Denver, Kansas City, no. Tampa Bay, Oakland, New Orleans Saints, Green Bay, Arizona, New York Jets, solid defense, Trubisky facing them. I obviously would not be doing it if I had Trubisky as my quarterback. Giants, Dolphins, Houston, not terrible. Baltimore Ravens, fairly stout. Look at the Chiefs all the way up here to 3,900. Don't let it want to. Well, you know what? Hell with it. It's going to bump this number back up to 7,000. Wide receivers. Let's go tight end next. Down here looking for some cheapies. Jermaine Gresham, Dixon, Clay, Vanett, Hoyman, Brait. You could do Brait, but it's a committee. Goddard, same thing. Jesse James, Vance McDonald, same thing. There's Uzoma. Dalton Uzoma stacked. Not the worst thing in the world. And look, we're getting up here to 7,400. If I came all the way down here some more, Keelan Cole, which are not high floor guys. I want things I'm fairly sure of. Albert Wilson out. Cortland Sutton, Danny Amendola, Christian Kirk, Willie Sneed. We liked him last week. Bad matchup this week, probably. Nelson Aguilar, Chester Rogers. Uh, T.Y.'s back in the game. Moncrief, Larry Fitz, Chris Hogan, Marvin Jones, Randall Cobb, Will Fuller, Allen Robinson. We're getting expensive again. Demarius Thomas, Devin Funches, Doug Baldwin, Sammy Watkins. Interesting. Sterling Shepard, Kenny Galladay, Jarvis Landry. Coming up a little bit more, Josh Gordon, Tyler Lockett, Tyler Boyd. And I'm still at 9,500 for a flex. Damn near gets me girly. Saquon Barkley, if I come down here, what would I want in the flex? I mean, I can come all the way down here and start upgrading. But in the flex, I generally want running backs. You know, James White's been fairly solid. Probably going to be a Sony Michelle game if 
he's good enough to go. Doubtful. We're going to load up a little James White. Although this is one of those times to watch for news to break on a practice squad basher coming up because we're still going to want to keep this a committee if we're Bill Belichick. Tariq Cohen, also cheaper. That allows me to upgrade some of these other areas here that might allow me to get up off of Chubb or Johnson. Kenny Galladay, Jarvis Landry. Got a couple of Cleveland in there without the quarterback. If I take out Landry, and I want to get up in here into these bigger games, 8,800 for Thielen. That's highway robbery. Highway robbery. Still got 300 left. I mean, these are just what you can do. First glance, that's how you build these things. Right? Let's go back. We're going to go NHL now, and we're going to switch these odds up. We're at 20 minutes. Time to fly. 115.6 leaning to the over. 165, five and a half leaning to the under. Arizona, Columbus. Columbus, not bad. Arizona shooting a lot, but not, you know, not scoring a lot. Columbus in a good spot. Florida, New York Rangers. Florida, maybe not in a bad spot. On a bigger slate like this, Montreal, Calgary. Calgary on the road plays a little bit better. Um, this game might be interesting. Five and a half leaning to the, strongly to the over. That 30 tells me strongly to the over. This one leaning fairly strongly to the over. Came down a little bit. Boston, Ottawa. 120 and a 6. 160 on Boston and a 6. Pricey first line. I'd focus on the second line in Boston. San Jose, Nashville. Nashville at home. San Jose, not terrible. Probably not a good team versus a bad team. Anaheim, Chicago. These are things I'd be writing down. You know, I would write down these matchups. When I dig into my research, I will. Just looking at first glance, nothing is really popping off the page at me. Dallas, big favorite, but leaning to the under. There are no massive favorites on the ice. Boston leaning to the over. Boston's probably one of the picks. 165, Columbus taking on Arizona, definitely one of the picks. Those are probably the two offenses that I'd pick for, and then I'd go looking at other offenses for one-offs. What I would wind up doing is going to NHL's uh, left-wing lock. I would come down here to the skaters, the tools and stats, stats. Come down here over to the team side, click core. Click Submit. Just a quick way to do research. Sort by goals. And these are the things I would write down. Once I wrote down the matchups, you know, Florida versus New York, Arizona versus Columbus. Now I'm going to go looking for who's got the goals, who's scoring all the goals. Washington, Ottawa. Who's Ottawa playing? Boston. But I'd be writing down their numbers. That's rank number two. Calgary's ranked number five. Predators are ranked, what, number nine. These are the numbers I'd be writing down. And then I would click over here, and I would go goals against, and I'd click it twice, sort these to the top. Red Wings, Flyers, Chicago Blackhawks, Panthers. Panthers on the slate tonight, facing the Rangers. So whatever the Rangers were in goals four, let's look, because the Panthers are fourth in goals against. So if I come down here to goals four, New York Rangers are going to be down here, down the list a little bit. 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. 26 facing the four. Okay? That gets a little bit of a bump. Now, I'd like to see them in the top half facing a bad defense. Because I don't trust that New York can score much. I don't think that automatically makes New York one of the premier offenses on the slate that should score a buttload of goals. I think it gives them a little bit of a bump, but it bumps them maybe from bad offense to mediocre offense. I'm looking for mediocre to good or from good to great. So I go back here to goals against. Washington, Blues, Ottawa. Ottawa's facing Boston. Is that right? Ottawa's facing Boston. Let's look at Boston. Boston was one of these goals for? Eh, eight, nine. Eight. So the eight going against, probably the eight. The eight going against the eight, that's about the best matchup we've got tonight in terms of a team that's scoring goals going up against a team that's allowing goals. So Boston is in play. 
We already know that by the Vegas odds. It just verifies. It checks another box. Clink. And tells us Boston's in a pretty good spot. We go through that. We go through goals for, goals against, rank them. Write them down. If the 1 is facing the 12, or if the 13 is facing the 3, or whatever, you're going to have to go through that. Maybe I'll put a graphic up sometime that will show you kind of what I do. It, at a glance, shows you the poor matchups facing good matchups, or the neutrals facing the goods, or the goods facing the bads. If I had number one offensive team tonight score, going up against probably the worst in terms of allowing goals, you know, whoever that is, then I would have to downgrade that top scoring team. Yes, they can blow up any matchup. Yes, they can still hit a ceiling and put up five, six, seven goals. But their frequency of doing so is going to be much, much, much lower. Much lower. So I'm going to get off of them because they're going to be a little bit overpriced being that they're a high-powered offense, but they're facing a subpar matchup. So there's no value in that game, at least kind of generically overall. There's no value in that game. So I need to get out of that game, and I need to look for other better spots. And if it burns me, it burns me. That's hockey. It happens. And then I do the same thing for shots for and shots against, right? Because sometimes I can see a team shooting a ton that isn't scoring a lot, and I can gamble on a little bit of positive goal regression. Eventually, the biscuit's going to find the basket. If you just keep shooting. Now, I need to look at the type of shots. I mean, these are shots on goal. These aren't Corsi numbers where it's just kind of pucks flung at the net in the general direction of the net. These are shots that are getting on goal. Again, though, there are high-quality shots, and there are poor-quality shots. A high-quality shot... If I went to Corsica.hockey.com, you know, whatever the site is, and I looked at scoring chances or high danger chances, shots from the dots, shots from inside the slot, shots you know, within two seconds of a rebound, those dangerous chances are the ones that if those are going on goal and those aren't going in, eventually they will. If I'm just crossing over the blue line with my defenseman and just kind of flipping a puck on goal to kind of get a soft rebound, that ain't a shot that's going to go in the goal. If I'm shooting a ton of those, of course, the defenders aren't really going to block those. But I'm not going to get any positive goal regression either because the puck's not all of a sudden just going to start finding the back of the net when it's coming in at 22 miles an hour and the goalie has a week to decide where it's going to go. You need something coming from close in between the dots or massive rebounds just right off the stick. Bang, bang, bang. Determine those types of shots and you can pick up on the goal regression. Otherwise, you're looking for high shot volume, teams that are allowing shots, High goals being scored, teams are allowing goals. Those are the offenses you key on for hockey. Run over to the NBA really quick. We can actually use this page for that. Very short slate tonight. That'll speed up the work. We're looking at Sixers, Pistons, no line yet. Clippers, Pelicans, 237. Obviously, people are going to be focused on this game. They're going to be focused on all four games. You're going to be looking at pace numbers. Denver Nuggets are going to get a few more possessions, and the Clippers are going to get a few more possessions. These are the two teams I might focus on. That's where you might find a little bit of your value. You're also going to scroll down here and look for your defensive matchups. Clippers point guards. Clippers shooting guards. Pelicans small forwards. Nuggets and Pistons power forwards. If they're in paced up situations, you key on them. You give it just a little bit extra. If I look down here at the starting point guards, I can look at the matchups and say, Beverly. It's worth a look. I'm not saying that you roster him across all of your lineups. I'm saying he's worth a look. Applied team total is okay. Price is really, really cheap. He's paced up, is he not? Face in New Orleans, paced up. There it is, right there. He's going to get a couple extra possessions to do something with. You know, I mean, I know he's not Russell Westbrook. Come on. But we're looking for value. That might be one area we look at. We look to. If I look over here at the shooting guards, I'm looking at possibly Gary Harris. There's a lot to choose from here. So while it's when the position's deep, see now here the position's maybe not quite as deep in terms of good matchups. You might take the matchup and run. You might take another, you know, decent matchup here and then move out of there. But your your position's pretty scarce. Your your value, your prices are pretty low. You might just come down here. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense yet to pay all the way up. But, you know, you might take it to Aaron Fox. Something like that. Because your position's fairly scarce, you're going to need to buy the consistent points. Although that's not a great matchup here. 
You might also take a look here at paying down because we've got one, two, three, four, roughly four shooting guards to pick from. So Avery Bradley probably gets in there. If he's projected to get some minutes, 28 minutes, you know, is 3,900 bucks, it could be your throwaway score on FanDuel. You know, uh, only one decent position. This is a very crude way to do this, but you might end up having to pay up 4,800. Man, there's a lot of money left. This is a crappy slate. There is no, there's nobody that doesn't look like really worth a crap on this slate. Here's another one we're going to have to pay up. So we're going to spend our money here. We're going to need to take value. Probably shooting guard, small forward. And then your centers. There's where your bigs are. There's where your bigs are. How popular is Anthony Davis going to be with all this other value out here? I mean, you just almost have to knock it, just lock him in. There's your pivot. Jokic probably is your pivot. You're going to have the money. So that's just an initial glance at NBA. Again, NBA is not my sport. That's something you're going to need to resort to our coaches on. You probably just found that out because I probably just pointed out some pretty shitty stuff. But that's where my research would start going. That's what I would start digging into. It wouldn't probably take me very long to figure out if I'm on the right track or the wrong track. I'll be playing NHL tonight over NBA. I'll be relying on our coaches for the NBA stuff. Short slate, tournament type slate. Probably not going to be playing a lot of cash. Might throw two, three lineups in 100-man leagues or single-entry GPPs and call it a night. But that said, you need to come over here and take a look at the content because we have research stations for every single sport we do. This is where your research really digs in. You can use the first glance stuff, and that's great. But when you really need the numbers, unveil this bad boy. And this is just the quarterback matchups. If I came over here and took the Vegas lines and sorted by who's favored, I go less than zero. That gets me the negative numbers, which is the favorites. And I'm looking for who is implied to score over 24 points. So I've got, and I'm looking for the yellow teams, the home teams. Patrick Mahomes, Matt Ryan, Jared Goff on the road. Nope, this is last week's numbers. My bad. My bad. Got to come back when the numbers get updated. But you can see how that would work. This is what we did last week. Did Mahomes have a decent day? Did Matt Ryan have an okay night? You know, Jared Goff, you know, Gurley went, did what Gurley did, but Jared Goff did throw a touchdown to him. Jameis Winston put up okay numbers. What about Carson Wentz? Did he at least hit his floor? Was he pretty steady? You know, this is where we go. You know, Joe Flacco was fine for me. I used Flacco. It was fine. NBA research station. Here we go. You want your projections, you want your position, you want to look at the point guards tonight, you click the little number there, the little dot, turn it blue, bring up all your point guards, start looking at the minutes, start looking at the projected points, start looking at floor and ceiling numbers. You've got full season stats, you've got past games versus the opponent, you've got hot and cold numbers, you've got minutes watches, you've got Vegas pace of play, paced up, paced down, there it is right there. 5x, 6x for your numbers, your multipliers, your consistency ratings. How often do they hit 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 6x? Obviously, you'd want guys hitting 5 and 6x a lot. You can sort by that if you wanted to. Only to sort descending. We've only got a few games to look at, you know, in, this, in the young season. But we've got John Wall, J.J. Barea, Isaiah Cannon. They've all hit 5x each night, each game. Full season stats. Opponents given up stats and stats per game. I mean, that covers the whole freaking spectrum, does it not? That gives you more stuff than you know what to look at. DFS Army makes it as simple for you as you want it to be by giving you the key stats in these graphics and then makes it as complex as you want it to be by giving you a whole truckload more. You really don't need to go anywhere else. I do things early enough in the morning that I look at some other websites until these numbers up, update or upload, and then when they do, I'm here. I'm all here. I don't show this a lot when I do these types of videos for that reason, because I'm doing things a little bit ahead of these guys, because I don't want stuff clouding my judgment. But once these guys start coming up, start chirping in our forums and our coaching channels, <laughs> I jump right over here and I do my research out of these stations. PGA is coming. There's a research station for that. You want to know the odds? You want to know the drift? How are they treating them in Vegas? Are these guys 
gaining more favorable odds in Vegas? Is money coming towards this player or that player, or is it leaving this player? Where are the sharps betting? It's one thing for that one. Course history, recent form, key stats, strokes gained, all these things are in there. If you're a PGA player, this is a massive, massive worksheet for you. Helps you very, very much find projected value for the salaries, priced up on different sites, etc. The whole bit. NHL, same thing. This research station has found legs. You can come down here to lineup comedy. You can look at all of those games side by side. You can find all of the pertinent stats that you want to find. Shots on goal, block shots, add them together. There's your floor in hockey, or at least it's a key stat. That tells me who is consistently active. I can see that the, the top line in Colorado is putting shots on goal per game, right? You can also see they're priced up <laughs> right here. But I can look at the 46 points, and that's mm, 30 to 40 points last night's about what they got. Same diff. This one is yesterday's numbers. But again, you've got implied scoring chances. You, you've got accuracy numbers. You've got your fan duel points. Green is good. Red is bad. You've got everything that you can look at, and you've got the lines and the power play units right here. You want to know that Provorov's on the, on the top line, you know, top defensive pairing, but he's on the power play too? There's your answer. This is how you stack and correlate. You can see the power play units down here too. You can see the last 10 games that they've put together and what their production is. Okay? Easy enough. This is one thing to do. And you want to know why we're winning the way we're winning? Look at this track record. Does, do these tools work? Does the coaching work? Does everything work? Does it all come together with a little bit of explanation for some of the experts telling you how to use those tools? Two nights in a row winning. 95 into 200. 100 into 500 almost. We're not just doing the double ups. We're winning GPPs. We're teaching you to get into the higher dollar, smaller entrant GPPs so that you can win them. 10x return. Who's going to complain? 100 bucks for that guy. This is going back to Saturday. If I scroll through here pretty quick and just find $1,000 in three days, great start to NBA. I'd say so. Track record, coaching, tools, content, bankroll getting lit. 70 into, that's better than 70 into 120. Better than these lineup sellers are giving you, telling you to play exclusively double ups. We have a system called the ladder system that teaches you how to allocate those and get paid on your good nights. We anchor ourselves in cash games. We love head to heads. We love 50 50s. We play a lot more than that. And when, we're, when our lineups get up here into the double ups, first out of 42, that damn lineup should have been in something like this. So put it there. We teach you how to allocate your process. We also teach you, hey, you want to win a thousand bucks MME, mass multi-entering tournaments? We have the domination station optimizer and the statistics and the tools to help you differentiate your core, to help you get off the herd a little bit, to help you set your player exposures, and to help you crank out 150 lineups in just a few minutes upload them to the websites and give yourself a shot at the bigger multi-entry tournaments if that's your game. It's not mine, but we have coaches for that. 23 into 130. 94 into 400. I'm not talking about double. I'm talking triple, quadruple, quintuple, 10x. Killed it in the main slate quarters. A lot of our guys play quarters. Domination Station did well. 20 bucks into 215. That's a 10x return. Hello. Army did well last night. Yes, it did. 500 here. Multi-entry. Bada bing, bada boom. Three entry max. Cashed all three. Not so bad. NBA is the most profitable sport we've got, obviously. NASCAR. You know, fourth place in a NASCAR event. Multi-entry. Profited on that one. Not so bad. Even with Bortles, I won something. That's kind of funny. 30 in, 65 out. Everybody's a winner. Seven dollars in, seven fifty out. See that? I'll blow that one up for you. Seven in, seven fifty out. Forty-four in, eight thirty out. What are you waiting for? Thank you, coaches, for all you do. Would have been a twenty k win. Seven other people tied. Hey, that's the nature of 
the short slate stuff. That's the nature of showdown stuff. That's the nature of getting in those contests with only four or five, six players, non-full roster type stuff. You get some ties. But who cares? Do you think he cares about the five grand? No, he's spending it. Very nice. Another multi-entry. 5,200 again. Three bucks into a hundred bucks. Hey, is that your speed? Three squares by CG. There we go. We've got articles that help you guys that put you on the right place. Keep scrolling down here. 50 into 150. That's triple. 12 into 77. What, 6x? 5 into 12, just a simple little flea flicker. Like I said, everybody's different. Everybody does their thing. There's some multi-entry cash, and look at that. Is most of this stuff in the green? Yes, sir. That's the showdown slate in NFL last night. Good on you. You guys, it just keeps going. How about 1200 bucks over on Fantasy Draft? How the hell did you find that kind of volume? That's amazing. This is one of our cash contributors uh, in the NBA side. Many of you guys know who he is. But I'm telling you, 1200 bucks in winnings over on the fantasy draft side with low volume. That's pretty good. Hard to beat. $600 there, one point. Oh, that's just one lineup, second place, one lineup. This was a multi-entry tournament where he took out, what, 1800 almost 1900 Damn. Good stuff. Thank you, coaches. You're welcome. I mean, it's all we get. We get these kind of people like to bash us out on Twitter and stuff. It's because you're not part of us. We do dig in. We do help people win. We do help people learn. 25 cents into 11.25. Yeah, that's a pretty good ROI. Everyone's got a quarter, right? More single game stuff. Guys, it's just that simple. You've got to become a member. You come down here to the tools side, you click the VIP membership under the tools tab on the website. You pick your price point. What level are you willing? Don't do this tools only option. Guys, tools only. You don't get the explanation. You don't get the coaching. I'm sorry. It's just not a wise way to spend money when it's only $10 more. Use coupon code CHOP. Knock 10% off that $45 bucks a month. Jump in for the year. Save even more money. Get in here, access all of our content, access all of our research stations, all of our optimizer tutorials, everything. Start making lineups, play across all the different sports responsibly. We've got bankroll management coaches, that's me. We've got contest selection coaches, that's me. We've got sporting coaches, that's a lot of other people. Can teach you how to properly invest your money and make this game a winning proposition for you. Is everybody going to win? No, 80% of the industry loses. Is Are you going to win on day one? Maybe, maybe not. But we're going to make you a better player. That's the promise I make to you. If you're losing 100 bucks a month, I can get you to lose less. That's the promise I can absolutely make to you. I can look you dead in the eyes, look into your computer screen, look right here into your webcam. I can look you in the eyes and tell you, I can make you a better player. I can make you lose less. Or if you're a slightly losing player, I can get you to break even. If you're a break even player, I can turn you profitable. If you're profitable, I could probably make you more profitable. Unless you're one of those guys that's up there making 1900 bucks off of fantasy draft because you've got that kind of bankroll, I can help you allocate that bankroll if you're having trouble with that. But I'm going to send you right to Cash Keg and, and tell you to talk to him. I am not so arrogant that I think that I know it all. I am arrogant enough to know I can tell you where to go and who to talk to. We have 20 coaches, 40 on staff, and tons of members joining every day. Click the like, click the subscribe button, become a VIP today. Don't delay. Ha, that rhymed. Come back and see me tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more detailed in NFL perhaps, maybe NHL, maybe NBA. We'll see where we go. This has been Chop Talk. It's been a long episode today. Hopefully you stuck through it all. Thank you very much. Post those comments in there. Tell me if you won last night. That'd be great. I'd love to hear it. I hear it all day long in Slack. I hear it out on Twitter. I'd love to hear it on YouTube, too. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon.